Hi all, in this video, let's learn about how to integrate ReactJS application with a Spring Boot application. So this is targeted for the beginners, okay? We'll be developing a simple React Boot application, a get call, and where we'll be requesting a get call from the ReactJS, and we'll be get ba getting back the data. So such a simple example here, this is targeted for the beginners. So let's start. So firstly, so I have created a React project. So that is with the help of this uh, uh, Re NPX, create react app we have done this so the react application is running now okay now how to build a spring boot application okay so most of them are like uh, they will be trying to use the eclipse or they will be trying to use a via intellij ides to develop any of the spring boot applications but as the front end developers most of them the favorite id would be vs code so now what we are going to do is will develop a Spring Boot application within the VS Code itself. For that, what we need to do? So the first requirement is we need to have a Java to be installed. So Java should be downloaded first, downloaded and that should be installed. So Java download, type like this and go to the second URL, not the first URL. Go to the second URL and Java download. Here you can download the version, whichever the version you are uh, compatible to your mission to the OS, you'll be downloading the Java. Okay, here Windows is there. You'll be downloading the Java here. So once the Java is downloaded, you need to set its Java home path. So the Java home path should be kept to the C program files. Uh, let me show you that to the bin folder. Till this point, you need to keep your Java home path. You need to set the Java home path. So this is the first step you need to do because we are going to develop the Java things. So that's the reason Java should be downloaded, installed. And so if that is downloaded and unzipped, uh, that if it, that is downloaded, it will be available here. And through the bin path, you need to set the Java home path, okay? In the environment variables. That's the first step we need to do. Second thing, we need to go to the spring, start spring.io. So this is the website where if you want to create a Spring Boot application, like a ready-made application, so this is the best way to do so. So here, what you'll be doing, you will be selecting the Maven project and Java as a language and whatever the Spring Boot version you want, you can do that. And here you can give the group name and uh, the artifact name, the description why we are building the Spring Boot application and the package name. So most of the cases, this would be the reverse for the domain. Okay, you'll be giving all the inputs, whatever you want and packaging, you will be giving that as a jar. And also you can add the dependencies to your palm here. So add dependencies if you want Spring Boot Dev Tools. If I click that, it would be installed here. And if I click on Spring Web, so that would be coming here. So once you click the generate, okay, you'll be getting the downloaded file. You'll be getting the, okay, let me do this. So usually uh, these days we are getting this one. When you try to generate application, Spring Boot application, you'll be getting something error like that. But let me show you this way. If you open the developer tools, and if you, now you click this, uh, most of the cases one give me a second so this is a usually i used to get this error but you may not get the same error of course so but the procedure is the same so once you select all the options here and the dependencies also added here so if you just click the generate button see now so a couple of times uh once you enable this developer tools and if you do this it is coming so I don't know exact reason why it is doing so, but this is how uh, we can generate a Spring Boot application. So whatever you have in the demo.zip, so you need to unzip that and you'll be getting a folder there. So let me share you that as well. So what is there in that folder, I will be showing you here, fine. So this is what you'll be having. So when you downloaded that, you'll be getting something called like this, clear? Now you need to add few more things to the VS Code. You'll be opening the folder what you get in the Spring Boot in a VS Code, okay? Now, this VS Code will not have the capability to run our Java and Spring Boot applications. For that, what you need to do is go to the extensions. Now you need to add two extensions. One is Java extension pack. So this is the one. So if you type the Java extension pack, you'll be getting the things like this. So if you click this, so this is the one, the Java extension pack. It consists of eight things, eight packages, okay? Uh, give me a second, no, not that, this one. Extension pack of for Java. So this is the one you need to type. So once you do this extension pack for Java, you need to install this extension. 
this extension has six more extensions so which helps us to debug the java code and all related stuff which we more or less this vs code becomes equivalent to the eclipse and ide uh, intellij ides so that is what we are trying to do with the help of these extensions in that the first package to be installed is extension pack for java okay if you install that so as i have already installed it i am getting this disable and uninstall buttons if you firstly you came here so you will be getting an install button once you install this so this is the first extension you need to install and the second extension is spring boot as we are going to develop a spring boot application let's install the spring boot extension pack okay type the same so you'll be getting something called spring boot extension pack so it has three extension packs okay once you install this all these three would be installed so spring boot dashboard spring boot installer java support spring boot tools okay you'll be installing both of these two clear so fine you we need to have two extensions to be installed java extension pack spring boot extension pack fine so now let's let's develop it's just a rest api so this would be the first file go to your src it looks like this in the src you can go to the main file in the main file this is the one file we have in this now we are going to develop a restful web service so for that what we need to do is we need to give an annotation so these are known as annotations we need to give rest controller so if as soon as you type enter this rest controller the import statements would be imported automatically why we are going to use this rest controller is this annotation tells the spring that our code will be expecting some endpoint or a web okay it means in short we are writing a restful web service in this so that is what this annotation is telling fine so later so let me write one more annotation that is known as at the rate get mapping so this is one of one of the other extension so in this mapping we'll be writing something so the you can write the endpoint url so just here i am giving this as a uh, hello okay what does this get mapping tells to the spring is so i am writing a hello method so below this i am writing a method okay whoever requires whoever act, try to hit this endpoint return back the solution from this method so that is what it, it will be telling us so let's do let's write a method so public string so this is a return type will be returning just a string back here so now i wrote an hello hello is the method name so now i'm writing a request request param so this can accept the request param as well so where it is yes it is here so as soon as i type this so the request param is also imported so what is the syntax so it it will be accepting a value so request parameter means the value which we are sending in the url so let's make that name as a name okay i will name it as a name and i will uh, keep a default value for that okay i will give a default value for that let me name that as a spring boot okay so if no one passes any of the url so you'll be getting something called this okay spring boot will be getting here okay and what is the type of this name this uh, request parameter type is string okay let me open the function so okay i'm getting some error here so let i think we need to import this get mapping yes we need to input it yeah that is error fine now here i need to return a string because the return type is a string and we are doing this for the string clear so let me return something so i am returning a string dot format i will return something like string format and i will mention hello hello and uh, let me keep percentage s so that the value which we give in the request param would be replaced here okay hello and whatever the query parameter you are sending that will be available in the name and that will be replaced here hello so and so if you are not passing any of the query string query parameter then this default value would be replaced here hello spring boot like that so fine these three are important rest controller to make sure that to tell the spring that we are writing a web service and get mapping this is to deal a get a uh, service it is like uh, if you get this endpoint it will be like a get mapping you will be having put and post mapping as well but to get start with the spring boot i am explaining about the get mapping 
and the request parameter that will be available in the URL. You will be sending that with this name as a request parameter and you will be sending some value to this. Okay, now how to run this application? At the top, you have something that run Java. So click that. So once you do that, it will compile the code and let me uh, increase this terminal. So this would be running like this. And once it is running, it is saying like this, go to the browser. So let me open a browser. I need to check whether this Spring Boot application is working or not. For that, what I can do is, I need to check localhost 8080. If you get something called like this, if it is telling the white label error like this, it means the default page. This is the default page for the Spring Boot. So what does it explain? It means our Spring Boot service is up and running. Now what we have, we have a Spring Boot application and it is waiting for the endpoint of hello. So if someone clicks this, so it can return back this hello and the name Spring Boot, okay? Let's do this in the React. So how the React in the React, how we are going to call this endpoint. Let's see that. So let me take this React. So I think React is here, fine. This is a normal React project. As I said, we have built on with the create react app. So in the top, I'm using a use effect. So to make an API call, we, need, we are going to use this use effect. And also you need to import that at the top here. So now I'm writing callback function and I want this to be triggered only once. That's the reason I'm given this as an empty dependency array. So here I'm writing the fetch call. So let me write this fetch call and let me paste the one, so the URL. So this is a URL, right? Let me paste this one, it's there. So I'll paste it here, Clear? Yeah. Now, uh, as this is a promise, let me write this promise and I will write how to get the value here. Fine. So like a response, you'll be getting the response and now you're going to convert that response as a text, clear? Yeah. Response.text. You're going to write a response dot text, and now this we shall console that response. Okay, you got that result. Okay, fine. And let's console that result here. Console dot log. This that result. Let me can console that log. Clear. From the React application, whenever this component is loaded on loading of this component, we are doing a fetch call and we are hitting localhost eighty eighty. It means our Spring Boot application. Make sure that Spring Boot application is up and running and React application is also up and running and the port numbers should be different. Of course, the default port numbers are differ. And also I have done a dedicated video on integrating the React.js with the Node.js as well. So I will keep that at the end of this video. Please watch that as well. So here, whenever this app component loads, okay, we are doing a fetch call to this service. And once the response is written back, we are converting that as a text because we are returning back a string. So that's the reason this response is converted to a string. If you are returning something called JSON, that we need to keep this response.json method here. Clear? And what we are doing, just we are taking that output and just we are consoling that. So let me uh, go to the React application here and right click it. So let's see that in the app, in the console and in the network tabs, what we are getting. So let me make it, let me zoom this. I'm refreshing it. So as soon as in the network tab, it will be hitting. Okay, fine. In the console, we'll be getting a fetch call failed. Okay, give me a second. Fetch call failed since. Okay, why it is failed? So let me refresh this once again. Okay, so let's see why it got failed. So we got 404 not found it since. So let's understand why we, okay, we are getting some cross origin issues here. So we, if you get something called this cross origin issues, we can do one thing. So we need to go to the top here and we need to add an annotation called cross origin. So this is the annotation we need to add if you get any of the cross origin issues. So once you add this, again, you stop this application and again, you run this Spring Boot application once again, clear? So once you do so, the Spring Boot application will be started. So once this started, okay, fine, it is started. So let's go back here and let me refresh this once again. So once it is done, okay, we again, we are getting 404. So let me see what the error is. I think we need to, oh, sorry. I think we need to do hello, right? So just we are hitting this service, but we need to hit it as a hello. So the endpoint is hello. 
that is a mistake we have done so the endpoint is hello so now if you go back to the api here so now we'll be hitting the react application will be hitting to the hello endpoint and as uh, that is working so you'll be getting something here see hello was hidden and you got the response review as hello spring boot why you got spring boot because you have not yet provided any of the query parameter so that's the reason you got the spring boot the default spring boot you got let's see if you provide any of the name so let me provide a request parameter so request parameter will be provided in this format question mark and name and let me give this as a in a single or in a double quote let me give this as a react js okay so the name is a property which that would be extracted as a request parameter and this value will be given in the place of spring boot now we'll be getting the request para and Re react js so let me explain that here so now we are passing react js so if you not pass any value yes that's the reason you got hello spring boot now we are passing some value called react js for the name request parameter now in this name you'll be having that request parameter that would be replaced here clear so now let's see the same thing so if i refresh the page so you'll be getting something here and the hello request should be hit and now see you are passing this as a query parameter so that's the reason it is going like this usually the query parameters you can also pass in the url as well so now if you see you are passing something like this so that's the reason you got hello react js okay so this is a basic uh, integration of a react js with a spring boot okay now you understood how to do an a spring boot how to build a spring boot in the vs code editor okay most of the front end developers are uh, uh, favorite on and recommended ide is vs code so that's the reason i have tried to explain the spring boot initialization and everything with the help of this vs code ide okay now if you install all these two two extensions like this more or less this vs code you can happily use the vs code same as the eclipse and uh, the i intellij ides Hope you understand the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos. Thank you.